Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today what we're going to be going through is how you can actually build a chat GPT app and deploy it on Vercel. What this means is you could actually build out a application through MCP and host it on Vercel that will actually allow you to interact with an app on ChatGPT, the website. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so uh, a little bit ago, a couple days ago, actually, this blog came out about how Vercel is going to support ChatGPT apps. This is like days after the announcement from ChatGPT uh, and is really awesome. So if you saw the previous video that was building a deep researcher on your own data through ChatGPT, uh, this follows a very similar pattern. Um, these apps are all gonna be delivered with MCP and this support on Vercel makes it super easy for, for anyone to get started. You could even vibe code uh, your own kind of application and use uh, Vercel to actually deploy this. So we're going to go through essentially this example and see what we can come up with. So the, the thing to understand is that we're going to be using a Next.js template and we're going to use the OpenAI sandbox instead of an iframe. And what we're kind of expecting is the fact that when we have a conversation with uh, OpenAI and we are trying to talk with our app, we'll actually be able to see something displayed and something that we can interact with on the ChatGPT uh, application. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to take a look at this template and see what we can come up with. Again, this is using the MCP handler that Vercel has put together. So if you go and look at the uh, ChatGPT app with Next.js, when you look at a demo, it's pretty simple, right? It's just a landing page, uh, but you can see right here, they're saying name the, uh, the name returned with the tool call. So what this means is we're gonna actually use MCP. We're gonna do a bit of a hello world where it's gonna call out to a tool, ask for a user's name, then display it on the web page. And so in order to do that, we're gonna take a look at this uh, template. So right down here is the GitHub repo. And the way we're going to kind of look at this is it's just a regular application, right? But there are some very specific things here where it starts talking about the route, which is the MCP route, the specific OpenAI metadata, and then certain configurations that you're going to need specifically around your base URL and the cores middleware. So what the cores middleware does is it basically is looking for the appropriate uh, headers that allow you to do a, uh, a response. So in order to like fetch the information that you need to do, and then we're gonna bootstrap all of this uh, because you're gonna need specific head information. So to, to get started, it's it's pretty, pretty easy. So we're gonna go up here at, as you kind of saw up at the top, there is a deploy button. We can go ahead and just click this deploy. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here. It's going to put it directly to my GitHub so that I can actually pull it down. And we'll go ahead and uh, launch this. So this is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause while we uh, this is creating. So, all right, awesome. So this has now deployed. We actually have uh, all of the information go ahead and get started. We're going to click continue. We can actually see our deployment here. Um, and let's go back and get our domain. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. Also join the Vibe Coding Retreat. And with that, let's get back to it. And it is the exact same as the demo. So now we can actually uh, try and wire this up to OpenAI and see what it comes back with. So the first thing to think about is, uh, you know, what documentation does the app SDK have? And basically, as you can see, the core concepts are we need an MCP server, we need some user interaction, and we need some design. So what we're going to do is we've already got our server, we've already uh, deployed it on Vercel, but now we need to take the next step of actually wiring this up to OpenAI. 
So if you look down on the left, there's connect from ChatGPT. This is very similar to what we did the other day in the previous video, where you have the ability to create a connector. So there's, uh, there's two ways to do this. There's the, uh, through the connectors, there's also through the playground. We're just gonna go ahead straight into uh, ChatGPT and set it up as a uh, connector. You do need to have developer mode on. Again, you can turn this on with your settings. All that information is uh, in the previous video. So if you come in here and you go to add sources, what you need to do is take your uh, API or your your URL, so this, and then I'm just doing a slash MCP. I'm copying that and I am going back over to chat. I'm going to click add, connect more, go to create. We'll just say next.js app. We'll go ahead and put this in here. I don't have authentication on here and I am going to say trust this application and go ahead and create. Cool, and now I actually have my enabled connectors. So I have the next uh, JS app. And if you look down here, when we're talking about the meta, the different kind of actions, this has a show content and the output template. And we're gonna go through the code and what that means, but we basically have different metadata that is getting associated with our tool, allows us to use this. So now if we go in, what we can do is we can say, uh, we'll just say use next JS app. And we'll see what it comes back with. Cool, so it's loading content and it's doing its tool call and it's actually performing the show content with the execution and it's just saying user because we didn't actually give it any information because we don't know exactly what's going on yet. So it returned the app, and as you can see now, it's displaying with user. So we are actually able to uh, send information to the app. So if we say something different, we say, uh, my name is JD, hoping that uh, this will actually send it to the content. So now we know it's gonna send it as JD. We can go ahead and confirm, and it's gonna update. So what's interesting about this is we're actually able to integrate with the web page through ChatGPT and display a response. We can still click the links here. If you can notice down the bottom left, I'm actually able to click these links and have it pull back in the browser. So we have an application that's in the browser and we're actually sending data to that application. So let's kind of look at the guts of what this is and we'll actually uh, create uh, a look at like the, the inner workings of the API or the MCP. So in the MCP, basically what's happening is we are con uh, constructing a widget content or like a widget uh, content um, thing. And so basically what that means is we need to display our widget metadata so these are specific for OpenAI to actually pick up. So when we say what our output template is going to be, it is going to be a resource of a template widget URI. What information do we have that we are invoking? What has been invoked? Uh, and is it accessible or not? So when we come down here and we start looking at what this means, if you know a good about, amount about uh, MCP, What's happening here is we're actually registering a resource. So a resource, or in this case, a resource template, basically allows you to use a uh, URI as a, as a template to pass data to a particular resource. Now, typically in the past, that resource could be a, uh, all different kinds of things. It could be text, it could be images, uh, it could be, I've tested like PDFs and things like that. In this case, what we're doing is we're sending an HTML file and we're sending information to that HTML file to then be processed. So right here is where we're having a register of our resource. We're calling it a content widget. 
the content widget URI is coming from our parameters up here or our uh, definition up here. This is just what the MCP is going to look at in order to pull this information. And then what we're going to do is we're actually sending back our metadata for OpenAI and what kind of HTML uh, are we actually processing. Then along with that, we are actually sending a MCP tool. This MCP tool is going to gather information from our input and it is going to send it to our context of what that tool needs to be. And then we're going to have structured content and you'll see the metadata is of the widget that we're actually doing. Something else that's really interesting about MCP and kind of how this is working is you can actually chain things together. So that means you can have a tool call and a resource or a resource that calls a tool call. And, and those that's kind of the action that's actually happening here. So if we actually take a look at like our uh, MCP inspector, it'll kind of give us another idea of what's going on here. So I'm just going to pull up the NPX uh, model inspector, and we're just going to go take a look at what these calls will look like. Uh, and I just need to get my app. So we're going to take this MCP. We're going to go back to our uh, inspector. We're going to go, you can leave everything the same, and we're going to go ahead and connect. And I think my proxy token is incorrect. All right, so my problem was is I basically had this authentication still on from the last one. So make sure your authentication is off and then you should just be able to click connect and uh, you're on HTTP. So now that I have my inspector, we can actually see what kind of resources we have. And we're going to look, we have the content widget and you can see the information that's getting pulled back here. You can also see the templates which we don't necessarily have. We just have this content widget. And then we also have our tools, which is show content. So what this is actually doing is we have our metadata, we have our name, we can say JD, we're gonna run, and we actually get that information as a tool call back to us, where it is returning the structured data and the metadata and then the unstructured content. So Basically, these ChatGPT apps are all running on MCP and they're returning a resource that is associated with this information that allows the ChatGPT to render your HTML, but also use the tools to send that information over. 